Boom, and we're live. What's going on, you guys? <laughs> How's it going, Here's DCC? Brent. Thanks for having there me. There we on. go. There we go. Yeah, we were doing it with some last minute audio issues, but we got it just right. Yeah, what's Hell up? Yeah, what's man. up, Gary? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, dude. Oh, that's that's all I was saying is yeah, you know, always gotta account sometimes for the different headphones, setting up the mic and stuff. But love that intro, man. There's a there's your intro. Someone said it about mine with Nagabo, but then there's Wales only too. That's got you know a banger. So uh, gotta love it, dude. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, I mean, there's some major stuff kind of going on right now in the hex space right now. Look at that, that 15 cent hex looking kind of juicy right now. It's looking kind of juicy right now. Yeah. So th this would actually not be a terrible time to start the DCA tippy toe in right now. If you guys haven't, um, if you guys have some dry powder trying to get some hex right now, I do believe we are going to go down lower. Dun dun dun! <laughs> but um, so the 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 kind of points I'm looking at is like basically right now. Right now is a great time to DCA, but obviously then 13, 11, 9 cents in that range and stuff, kind of buying odd numbers. And if it goes lower than nine, then <laughs> I back up that Brinks truck. Basically, is what I'll do. But um. We, we're, we're getting we're getting kind of a, just right now just for the minute uh, we're just getting um, kind of a double doozy right now in terms of the, the hex price. One, we have multiple sack phases going on right now, so some people are mm -hmm. selling hex for sack phases. You know, we're getting sacked in the face right now, double sacks. And, <laughs> and then on top of that, too, we're also getting this, the other sack. Oh, it's actually triple sacks. What are we talking about? A uh, triple <laughs> sacks. Yeah, um, and we're you know that other sack, the the, the actual real one for Pulsex is ending in a couple days. So it's kind of you know like that. So wherever you guys, if you guys, if you guys are DCing from this point onwards, and the price goes lower, these are great, great prices. Um, just to give you guys an FYI, the last time I really purchased a large amount of hex was at thirteen cents. And so, yeah, I mean, wh what was your last purchase? If you don't mind me asking, Brian. Dude, it was it was like maybe like five cents, three cents, five cents, something like that. It was it was a while damn. back, yeah. Like stunt on a dude, goddamn! <laughs> <laughs> oh, just three, just three X for me. No here, you know, my, my, last, my last purchase, you know, I'm you know, I'm, I'm kind of plebbing out here in the streets, but you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, it's true, man. Yeah, no, like you mentioned with some of the other sacrifice phases. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people have been kind of inheriting and, and adopting that that similar strategy that Richard's kind of done with the sacrifice. No, no, definitely, definitely, definitely. So did you, oh, so I guess like first, could you introduce yourself, Brian? Obviously, a lot of the OG uh, watchers on my channel have know who you are. But for people sure. who don't know, um, who is Valia Brand? <laughs> 
Yeah, no, thanks for having me on. Um, so yeah, my name is Brandon Balliet. Uh, I've been in crypto since early 2017. Uh, I mean, obviously I'm kind of into Hex and Pulse Chain and Pulse Hex and, you know, experimented with a lot of alts and stuff like that in 2017, 2018, 2019, uh, you know, had, had been participating in, uh, in Hex since it kind of came out, followed, you know, Richard for a long time. And, and uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan of crypto. You know, it's the highest appreciating asset class as just a whole, uh, let alone some of these other cryptos that, you know, do yield on top of it and can really earn you a lot of money. <laughs> right. I don't think people, I mean, I, I, I'm just speaking for myself here a little bit on, on your behalf a little bit, but like people don't understand like how, like, like brands are OG OG in Hex, like straight up triple OG back in the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you you would get a little bit of hater aid just because you were so young, basically, and, and a lot of people were just super jealous. Like, God, damn it, Brand! Like, you had to be so young into hex. Like, how, like, how do you just stumble onto this lotto ticket? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, dude, it's it's true, man. Yeah, no, because because I'd been following Richard since like I mean, he was a Bitcoin maxi at the time. Uh, all these things, and and uh, yeah, man, it's I'm happy that I stayed in, dude, because the the first bear market itself. I mean. I had never really experienced anything like that of <laughs> the investment that that I was saving for for like years, you know, tank probably by like 90%, something like that. But but uh, anyways, uh, the, the space itself as a whole is is amazing. I mean, I've met a lot of cool people and same with a lot of people in your your mindset course. I think it's Jerry, Dave and, and Steve I've hung out with before, too. And and you're right, man, like the, the early days of Hex is is great and, you know, got in early as well. And uh, right. You know how far we've come since then so gotta love it not many people were were there uh, at that point in time and then are still here now you know just a handful right. yeah and we've gotten a lot smarter than we, oh, thankfully <laughs> than we used to be as well yeah. but uh yeah it, i mean it was crazy i mean being in hex back in the day and it was like you would buy it and be pixie it was pixie dust it didn't even make sense it was like i, I mean i even remember, remember back in the day when it was like it wasn't even like 10 percent of a penny it was like less than that mm, it was like mm -hmm. Like fifty percent of one of of ten of one percent of a penny <laughs> in terms of the prices and stuff, and it was all pretty much all kind of fairy dust. Um, at least that's how it felt and stuff until like we hit when we started getting close to that penny mark. When we got to half a penny or a penny, that's when it was like, oh wow, this is getting serious now, really serious now. Well, dude, yeah, I, I know. Uh, yeah, a lot of us were kind of like daydreaming and just dreaming in general about like, dude, yeah, because you know when you've got like four zeros and then four or five, whatever it was at the very low, um, then yeah, obviously a penny is a huge, is a huge milestone from there. And, uh, and I know when we hit that, I think it was like, uh, at the end of the year of 2020, something like that, that we hit like two pennies, but anyways, right. no, it's been a fun journey and, uh, yeah, a lot of cool people along the way. No, de de definitely, definitely, definitely. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to John man right here. Yeah. Smash the like button, you guys retweet this stuff on Twitter and stuff. Let's get more people in here and stuff. But uh, definitely, man. Um, are, are you, I've just got a question. Like, are you going to jump into the sacrifice, the new sacrifice phases to the new, the, uh, what was it? Like liquid loans and um, Minter or Minter? Um, honestly, probably not. I mean, just the, the way that, uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> let the, uh, let the neck chopping begin. No, right. um, I'll be honest. I mean, I haven't really looked into, I mean, I haven't looked into Mintra at all. I've looked into LL a little bit, but as far as it goes, I mean, the thing that I realize is like, okay, there's only so much, you know, allocation capital that you can kind of have for the investments. And, and obviously I understand that, you know, getting in at the ground floor of some things are nice, but for me, I already went pretty freaking heavy on Pulse Chain and Pulse X. And it's like, okay, you know, I can, I can allocate and I could sacrifice to some of those, but part of me is just kind of getting greedy and just holding on to what right. I think might be, you know, don't want to sacrifice all that hex or all that USDC. I think people are also forgetting that like, I mean, this is me being just guesstimating here, but like, I, I do believe the snapshots happening in March. So, you know, now like we're basically rolling up, we got ah, four or five days more on the 25th. It's, it's all over at that point and then it becomes a, it's it's already an extremely bad deal already i mean like we're almost at like what the eight dollars per sack point or something Ugh. not not yeah. not great and um for, for pulse x and once that once it kind of rolls over you don't even have the amplifier of like, the 1.795 bonus on it then it's pr pretty terrible deal basically um yeah, 
once that ends, I, I do expect a bit of a dip down, um, rolling that over. Obviously, March, I mean, February is the shortest month of the year. Shout out Black History Month. Uh, <laughs> and then, um, you know, from there, I think once we have a slight, that slight dip, we'll kind of crack back up. But we are, there is like a little bit of this weird, this kind of weirdness going on right now with um, the liquid loans. I haven't checked out what's the newest count of like how much is being sacked right now, but that does play a little bit of an effect and stuff because most people who are jumping into liquid loans are hexagons, you know, mm -hmm. but but most, you know, hopefully a good chunk of people are sacking something else, but I know it's USDC and stuff, but, um, you know, we also have to be kind of, we have to, you know, tell the truth here that a lot of people that are, because like, you know, a lot of people in the projects are hexagons and most of their wealth is in hex. So in still facto, they're going to have to sell some hex if they haven't already like reallocated. I do know that people that are like hardcore all in on hex that if they're trying to get into it, they have to sell hex into USDC. It's mm. like, it's it's this the fact of life you know but yeah. it doesn't mean there's anything bad and it doesn't mean that's anything bad or anything but it's just mm. it is what it is is it five well, million yeah. oh, thanks, Jerry. well you're right that like most people they're not gonna like plan it like at least with that one specifically they're not people don't usually plan ahead and are like oh you know if i need just your SDC for this let me do a couple limit orders you know a couple days in advance something like that to where you actually have the capital but yeah most people it's like Oh, here's when this phase starts. Let me just mark it sell. So you're right. I could see how that kind of plays into uh, some of that effect for sure. No, for real. No, for real. For real. For real. Um, but yeah, man, just uh, for anyone that's in the chats and stuff, be on the lookout for pin messages. I think we're going to have one in like two days. So the cool, the cool thing about all these sack phases is it's pretty chillaxed. It really is. I mean, like for Mintra, it's like you have two weeks. Or not, well, not two, like yeah, like nine days, which is a long time, as well as the other, the other, the liquid loans run is just USDC or or die or whatever. So, and it's just and it just started yesterday, so plenty of time on that too. So it's like, just kind of. How long is that one for? Do you know? Uh, uh, I have to look at the the dates and stuff. I don't want to really talk on my ass, but right, right, right. Uh, no, I was just curious. I was just curious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, but yeah, it's it's probably gonna be for a good chunk of time and stuff. They're all copy, comic copy. I'm not trying to talk bad about anything, but I'm just like just speak my mind and stuff. But yeah, I mean, like actually, and Hex had pretty cool thing, you know, like yeah, Belly brand stick to RH products. <laughs> yeah, hey, but there's, there's nothing me, wrong with speculating either, you know. Right, right. No, it's true. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, you know, uh, like like I was saying earlier, you know, the opportunity of anything is getting in at the ground floor. So if someone's convinced that you know, the potential or that it probably will stuff like that versus the other thing, then, you know, yeah, why wouldn't you do a small amount? But, but, uh, I totally know what you mean. I mean, yeah, anymore. It's like, I've heard people say like, oh, you know, uh, making wealth is one thing, but then like retaining it or keeping it's another. And so I've just kind of tried to yeah stick with, with what's tried and true. And, and at least with some of the bigger ones, the pulse chain and pulse X, like I put a, put a decent amount into that. So I'm looking forward to see what that does as well. Yeah, I mean, but I just want, I want to kind of put this kind of thing out there that, you know, obviously um, don't really expect profits really for, until like we've had like six months, eight months in Pulse Chain launched and stuff. So if let's just say worst case scenario, Pulse Chain launches in, uh, let me let me look at the calendar right here. Uh, let's just say August, right, would be the latest, right? But let's just say August. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. So like January, February, maybe getting in some profits and stuff like that. If, and it's, it's just a sort of, it's just a sort of thing where um, I have a bit of a, a, a theory, unless you're like a top 10 wallet in all these sack phases, like you, you, you won't really be in quick profits until, because there's multipliers on all these sack phases and everything. And so usually the, you know, even though there isn't VCs, we're the VCs now, right. With all these sack phases um, there, there is sort of a light VC rule where like, if you are a part of the, the top 10, maybe top 20 wallets, you know, you, because of the extra bonus coins and that brings your cost basis down, you're in, you'll be in profits extremely faster that um, maybe the price will only drop as low as that. Mm. You know, so, so looking at where maybe the Godwell got in or something like that, and then seeing how much their, what their cost per, uh, their cost per pulse chain token is, then that'll probably, that could possibly be where the floor ends right there for a while or very quickly gets above that and everything. And then we're in instant profit, which is pretty cool. But yeah. yeah, no, it, it is true. Uh, like you mentioned, I mean, uh, yeah, so many people, whether it's crypto or whether it's other markets, they instead of like letting them be observant and have like the market kind of, you know, tell them 
how, how it is. Some people usually, like you mentioned, they might assume that, oh, you know, you're going to be in profit this early or, or that early. And right. the thing that I'm happy about with, at least with, you know, Pulse and PulseX and stuff is that, I mean, there's a lot of hexagons that, you know, obviously did well and, and don't ever need to really or have plans, right, to to sell like Pulse Chain or PulseX. And, and obviously everyone's got like a different profit taking strategy. But yeah, that is the best thing that you can do in, in crypto, at least with viable products is, you know, buying and holding. So it's just cool that there's there's a lot of people that'll be, you know, doing that too. No, definitely. I mean, there's a, I mean, in terms of, um, I think the mentality, I mean, I mean, I think the people who are like the most like hex maximalist are probably going to be doing the best in these new ecosystems because we can hold. But we are, I, this is the first time that I'm going to see the hex community get inundated with the yield farming mentality, which is, you know, like making LPing, taking profits, repothecating, doing all that jazz and stuff. So it's, it does make you a little bit more tradery in a way as mm, well. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how people, we'll see how people act and stuff. It'd be, it's going to be really funny. <laughs> Um, th this That's time so around, true. you know, we don't, we don't have a locking phase for our coins. So it's, um, you, the emotional control is what I hope a lot of you have. I think some of you do mm -hmm. have like, we, but the same time. So it's, it's the sort of thing where, um, in terms of the psychology of it, right. Most hexagons have like, I would say, let's just say 80% of their hex locked up in terms of stakes. Worse, you know, worse. Most people, it's more than that, but like, let's just, I just, mm -hmm. just to make math easy, 80% of your hex is locked up over maybe like a five year average, six year average, nine year average for some of you guys. And you have a certain amount of liquid. Well, now you're, you're, you're playing, you have to play treasury. Like, it, it's the sort of thing where people may be acting with their liquid, with their liquid pulse bags, liquid pulse X bags, like they, like they have more, they, they, like they have more in stakes, but they actually don't, right? They have it mm -hmm. all out at that point. So uh, one mistake can be pretty costly in terms of, um, it, it, yeah, it can be, it can be quite costly in terms of, um, you know, you make one misstep, you don't understand in permanent loss very well. Um, you're trading back and forth. Cause like what's going to happen is yeah. When you're in a deflationary state, um, even though you're, yield, like, some of them are deflationary. It's like, you, you know, it's, it's this sort of thing where, you know, there's the burn and everything like that. And like yields will go down after a while. And then people start going like a little while trying to get even more or something. So mm. we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, I've heard you mention that like a long time ago and I completely agree. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, just, and it's kind of like this with a lot of things, but because they maybe had success one time or in one area, they might think that they can just directly, relate that to, like you mentioned, like, oh, now every token that I invest in is going to be legitimate and, and have all these other things. And, uh, and yeah, that is where you can definitely uh, realize that you're not always right all of the time and certain risk management things, kind of like you mentioned with the, the yield farming and certain things. Uh, there's, there's some things that are just way higher risk than others. And, and most people, once again, have never been through like a full market cycle to realize that a majority of the coins on a blockchain you know, don't do that well. It's usually just a small minority. Right. I mean, a lot of people don't know that we were, we used to be a part of the Litecoin community. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. <laughs> Can you talk about some of that stuff? Because you did, you, you did pretty well, man. Like you sold, you sold at a really great price on, uh, on uh, Litecoin, man. You beat me on that one, dude. Like I, I bought the top, I bought the bottoms and like traded pretty well during 2018, 2019 on Litecoin. But I, I did not do that 27 thing. Like, go ahead, tell them. It's pretty yeah. crazy. Well, yeah, I mean, I was, you know, accumulating it and that was one of the first cryptos that I got into because Bitcoin was like a thousand bucks at the time and Litecoin was like 27 and same thing, that logic where it's like, well, you know, do I want a fraction of a Bitcoin or do I want, you know, 10 or 15, whatever it was Litecoin at the time. Um, but anyways, yeah, it, 420 at least on Coinbase was its top because it was GDAX at that time, you know, uh, you know, Coinbase Pro now, but Anyway, yeah. set a limit order for 420 and, and obviously, the, you know, that ticked and stuff and that hit, which was literally the very top, which is cool. But uh, that was my first market cycle um, or that was my first top, I guess. I hadn't experienced the bottom yet. And so I, I had taken some of the profits from, you know, selling at 420 and just bought back way too early. I was like, oh, sold at 420, price is 325. What a discount, you know? And then it just continued to, <laughs> to keep taking and going down. So I learned kind of, okay, like... You know, when, when you take profits or when you realize that a market cycle is going to play its course, then, you know, don't try and force it, you know, let it kind of run its cycle and then come back. Yeah. That would have been funny if you sold it at 420.69 cents 
and then back back <laughs> I and know. $369. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, that's true. But no, like you mentioned, it was because, yeah, it was like the first community that I'd been a part of. Uh, I was curious about crypto. And then I go on YouTube and it's like, whoa, there's this whole community and kind of industry of, of people that I didn't really know that existed until now. Um, but uh, the Litecoin community was you know, definitely one of the ones that I liked as far as I'd been in a handful of other cryptocurrencies at that mm -hmm. time too, maybe 10 or 15 other ones. But I always liked kind of some of the the camaraderie or some of the aspects about that. And so when when Richard created Hex, same thing. I had no idea that there was all these Richard Hart followers until Richard had started plugging uh, Telegram. And so I went over there and then it's like, oh, cool, dude, here's a similar to Litecoin, but just people that are a lot more, you know, similarly focused and similarly minded. So it's cool to have a community, man. No, definitely, man. Oh, my God, the chat's killing me bro <laughs> but uh but yeah man hit the like button you guys but uh they, i guess people want to know when you're when's the next brand <laughs> <for you. laughs> no it's funny i uh yeah they Is that real? brand man the chef uh they well so like i never delete it so when i i've had my youtube channel for like 15 years like ever since i was 10 what? and at first yeah yeah i've got a whole bunch of videos that got deleted too when alphabet bought google uh or when they right. you know bought youtube um in like 2008 but anyways yeah i used to uh do a whole bunch of cooking and nothing like super fancy or anything just kind of like always yeah. a, a hobby and a passion and stuff but but it was kind of just being in front of the videos or being curious about stuff like that that made it really easy for me to to get into live streaming after i had joined rg3 on discourse syndicate a couple of times right. that's really cool <laughs> man cooking with bran what's going on you guys dun, dun. <laughs> Yo, but uh yeah some br people are saying like brand, brand flakes <laughs> <laughs> no i love it dude your uh your chats they're always popping off and and you know like i said like any community i think is you know usually beneficial for people and stuff but uh it's cool the uh the following that you've got as well like i said you know going to we went to the shooting range we've gone to you know lunch and All stuff right. a handful of times but it's cool that you know they had found out uh of hex through you but also i wouldn't have met them had they not you know reached out to me as well so that was kind of cool yeah man shout out to crypto mindset man they were hanging out with brand and stuff that's pretty that's pretty cool man uh people people don't know how many people we've onboarded onto hex man it's kind of I, it we're, we're uh yeah it's a lot of people i mean shout out crypto mindset and stuff but uh we're we're uh we're slowly growing as like a, one of the bigger tribes in the hex community which is pretty sick man actually as a matter of fact you know i'll hit a little uh hit a little bit <laughs> I, I love i love the meme culture dude uh you know the the pepe and stuff like that man it, yeah. it never gets old dude pure pure comedy <laughs> so i have a new version of that one it's the same meme except i'm just changing some of the words around and stuff but um coming soon basically which is which That's is awesome. like uh, <laughs> i love that meme that shit is so funny but um yeah man like yeah dcc made us all farmers that's for sure Humble no, it's a, it's important you know i mean richard talks about it or just anything right but like uh the importance yeah is whether it's crypto or certain things is onboarding people in the first place so mm -hmm. uh, the fact that i've seen like you mentioned i think i think you were saying like something over like seven thousand people uh that you'd kind of onboarded specifically um in, into hex and things like that and you know obviously crypto in general but it's just awesome man because once again it's such a limited time when you look at uh history in the future of this opportunity of you know some of these mad gains before a lot of the people really adopt it right i mean fucking look at this so ginger's like i found brand coffee whales k4k gerard richards tendies cabana motley all because of yeah man crypto mindset quarter four baby yeah no for real i mean yeah man it's the gateway you know it's, the, the thing is my my method's a little bit more relaxed than a lot of other people right and um i mean because like i mean obviously you've seen the whole thing that happened with the um what was it the nascar thing Which, oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah 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 richard got a little uh 
kind of heated a little bit. Uh, oh yeah, dude, I listened to that a couple times. Yeah, well, he was. I think he was mostly mad that like the minute he found out, the money was already sent in, basically. So it mm-hmm. was like he didn't get. A, he did, I think he was kind of more mad that he didn't get more of a heads up, but kind of like he he's kind of discouraged. I mean, like I forgot how much they. I mean, they sacked. I mean. <laughs> How much hex they sold and stuff to pay for it, but I think it was like six hundred thousand yeah. dollars plus for the uh, for you know um, for the NASCAR uh, racer and stuff, which is, I mean, hey, there's some cool pictures, man, for real. But in terms of like, he was pretty much right. Like they never even said hex one time. They barely showed the mm. car, mm-hmm. and six hundred fifty yeah NASCAR sack yeah yeah. But well, um, no, it's it's a, yeah. Well, you're right because it it's so true. I mean, you know, kind of like with what you guys are doing, onboarding people and, and getting people you know, into crypto, like that's the most important thing you can do. And so when Richard, cause Richard was like, I listened to that a couple of times and I'd like to, you know, I want to chop up some clips and stuff. Um, mm. Cause I think they're important. They're good reminders. But Richard kind of was just talking about that. I mean, you know, certain things kind of look cool, uh, whether it was like the economist magazine or uh, in, in the UK, right. The right. taxis and things like that. And, and Richard had mentioned even then, which I didn't know about, but it makes sense now because he's been talking about this in sci-fi for forever but that yeah more of the direct marketing works and that kind of that brand advertising doesn't and so i'm a i'm a fan that richard you know he's almost like you know because i've got three older brothers i mean and i'm the youngest he kind of reminds me of like that older brother or you know that person that's that's like looking out type of deal and and i think like you said he he might have you know said earlier on that that wouldn't work had he kind of maybe known about it and you know, right. so anyways, it was just a good kind of kick in the nuts for people that, you know, haven't maybe experienced that before, have R- Richard talk about that before, where we can all collectively realize, okay, because 640000 is a lot of fucking money, you know, and that you, you know, might be able to have a better opportunity doing a, a different kind of marketing strategy. Yeah, because even if, even if it was like, even if everyone already had the cash, it could have been buying pressure that could have gone into hex, possibly. You know, in terms of like that, like I'm, I'm talking about the whole hex side of the community. You know, I'm not really talking about other, you know, because my channel is more of a multi coin channel, re- realistically, man. Uh, yeah. Shout exactly. out Moon Gang and stuff, but where like I'm not a, I'm even though I'm, I'm an OG hexagon and I'm a hardcore hexagon and stuff, I like I dabble in other coins. Like for totally. sure, I do. Like I, Hex is not the only ecosystem. Pulse Chain will not be the only ecosystem I'm playing around with and stuff. But that's just so I don't, so I don't lose um, the sh- like you know st- my sh- like my sword, my katana stays sharp basically in terms of because yeah. it's like I'm able like by by being really active in these other communities, I'm sort of I can sort of see possibilities or at least patterns that could that could eventually show themselves up in the in the Pulse Chain ecosystem. Or the hex ecosystem, and then this keeps me a little bit more. Try to at least try to keep myself a little more of uh, ahead of the curve and stuff in terms of that and stuff. Mm. Actually, look, Renji T had a really funny ass thing like late coin, late coin Moses, right? Well, dude, that we, me and Brand were kind of talking about that. You know, like one of the reasons why, like, um, obviously, I think RG three kind of started that joke is late coin Moses and stuff. Well, the only reason I was even late was because I was working a fucking full time like biz. I was working in my business full fucking time, working seven days a week, and I would work from like the minute the sun would come up until it would come down because I was trying to grind so fucking hard to get money to ape into crypto and buy hex and get Ethereum and Litecoin and all these coins and stuff like that. Like I don't regret any of that. And like I was push every. I mean, brand knows and stuff because we were talking the green room sometimes. Like I would come on stream and just like take my dirty ass shirt off of work and just like button up or put a black shirt on and just jump on stream just like that just i would i would barely make it to the streams on time and stuff like that and like uh there, there's like this whole thing on me being like late all the time and stuff like dudes like it was because like i was mm. working my fucking ass still am working my ass off but yep. legitimate it is a little bit like it's funny like i don't i always p- play with the jokes and stuff but legitimately like i was working all fucking day and it wasn't like some bullshit ass fucking like like cubicle job i was out there working yeah. in the fucking sun like all damn day like burning my fucking skin and shit like i know i look pretty pasty white now but i was a lot tanner back in the day I'm like oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> 80 pounds lighter working in the sun but um yeah, no legitimately mean. like i was working all day and night and stuff i mean i mean literally like i would if i if, if someone would call me it's like miguel something happened and stuff i would just drive out there and be like yes i'm gonna get some cash Brr, driving in my little fucking toyota truck and stuff you know trying to like I'll be like, like, just, I was like, yeah, call me anytime. If like, literally like if someone would call me at like, it would be midnight, Miguel, um, um, something happened and stuff. Our whole ir- irrigation system won't turn off and stuff like that. Could you come by? I'm like, fuck yeah. I would fly yeah. zoom out there. 
and stuff and go, because i'd be like dude fuck yeah 300 400 that i can ape into crypto or buy dude that's like that's like two ethereum you know at the time i was like two because and then i was like cool I, I can sack another ethereum into the into the aa phase and then put like an ethereum in my tre- you know my treasure or something like that i'm like dude you know it, it, it like that's that's what it, that's what i was doing and stuff and i was like i burnt i burnt the candle at both ends like mm. for a long long time to put to the point where like i put like it even hurts me like i i still don't talk too much about this but it still hurts me to like i'm trying to have ba- like my back pain is starting to come back again from my from, from from a work injury and stuff that i had like back in like 2000 i had one in 2015 another one in 2018 and stuff which isn't which is literally cool but um yeah hard work pays off and stuff like that. i'm not complaining about it but it makes me smile now just thinking about it <laughs> Like, but, um, you know, and because I know you work construction as well. I mean, you worked in the whole industry, you know, you, you know how hard that fucking work is. It's not easy. I was going to say, yeah, I, I, yeah, I worked in it and then also, yeah, dealt, dealt with like contractors and towards the very end, the last time that I was working at for mutual materials, yeah, I was kind of just dealing with a lot of contractors, making sure that deliveries would, would go out properly. But, but same thing that you mentioned, and that, that is one thing I want to say that, that is kind of just. Uh, I think an aspect of of humans where Rich has talked about this before, where there's like some sort of Reddit channel where you know people get free things, like choosing beggar, I think, and and that they would they would always kind of complain even if the thing was for free. And so, anyways, uh, not not down talking the chat or things like that, but a lot of people don't realize the the work that goes into it, and that I mean, you know, it's not like anyone is paying you. You are volunteering your own time after working full time and probably overtime too, I can almost guarantee to, uh, to educate people and to get more people into the space. So, you know, definitely shout out to people like you and, and the other people doing it as well. Cause once again, it's, it's really easy to be behind a keyboard or a chat and stuff and then kind of armchair quarterback, you know, say how it should go. But in reality, it's a lot different actually doing it. Definitely, man. Sandy Beach killed me with this shit. Like, ibuprofen or leave can be your best friend, not medical advice. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. I try not to take pills and shit, or like pain pills or anything like that. But sometimes, like, yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. Um, gotta do what you gotta I have do. a pretty non addictive, addictive personality, if that makes sense. Maybe that doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can cut shit off pretty cold turkey and stuff. Like, actually, I had some guy, like, I, it's kind of crazy. Like, hey, this is, I mean, this is no disrespect to anybody in the hex community. Right. Mm-hmm. And I re, I, let me, let me, re, it, no disrespect. This doesn't mean you're lesser than or anything like that. Sure. I'm just sure. talking about myself. Okay. 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 Like I need, okay. I need to like, <laughs> okay, okay. Out there, like, chill, like calm your tits, you guys, when I say this shit. Yep, yep. But like, I've got a lot of self control on stuff in terms of like, it, it, it's it's kind of crazy. Like I remember I would be on the Discord Syndicate and I would have a drink or something, or like I would pull out like I don't know, I wouldn't drink, I wouldn't drink rum or something. I drink like a beer or something, and like a lot of the people on the streams or a lot of hexagons were like past alcoholics and were like, you know, they don't drink anymore and stuff like that. But that's I'm sorry, but that's not my fucking problem. Yeah, because I don't have that problem. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. It's true, and, 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 and I mean that but yep. respectfully as I possibly can. But like, you know, some people don't have a drinking problem or don't have an abuse problem or anything like that, and and things can be done recreationally. You know, it's like uh, I, may, I drink maybe once every three weeks, if that. Yeah, dude. it's usually on, it's usually on a stream. When you guys, if you see me, I rarely ever drink at all. Which is kind of crazy, but it's it's kind of insane, you know. It's so, but a lot of people put the sort of uh, connotations, you know. If it, someone was an ex drug, a drug, you know, a dr- you know, was like a drug addict, mm-hmm. they see anyone doing drugs and they're like, oh, they're gonna ruin their life. And it's like, it's obviously don't fucking do meth and shit and everything, like, of course, <laughs> duh. But like, you know, like you know, it's, they see people drinking or like like going out or anything and stuff. They think that their whole life's gonna spiral out of control or something. Like, calm your tits, you guys. Okay, chill, chill. Like everyone has a different path and stuff like that. Like, all right. <laughs> that's true. Well, dude, that's true. Yeah. Like any, any sort of like extreme, I don't know. I mean, in a, like, obviously like you mentioned, people have their own experiences and stuff, but any, anytime you've got something extreme, like I know, like with the, I mean, Richard was like this way with Bitcoin, right? Where it's like, okay, everything else is not Bitcoin is a shit coin type of deal. And kind of just like super, super on the, on the one side, which is fine. But then, yeah, you're also kind of discounting that things like ethereum did really well and, and kind of like you mentioned just because one thing might not work for another person doesn't mean you need to 
can condemn them, <laughs> you know? So I see what you mean. Well, Art, yeah, this is a tough one right here. It's hard for me to put the fork down, but that's about it. <laughs> I feel you on that. That is that. Well, it's because it's the addiction you you need. Like food is like what you need to sustain your other than water, you know, like you, you need like food is. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I get it. You know? it's, true, I mean, bro. I get it. I mean, I get it, man. Like, yeah. But other, I mean, but other than those those things and stuff, it's just basically, yeah, just just it's a little bit about self control or just having or just like putting it as like I'll drink once a night, or once a week or something like that. But it's it's almost like the point you got to not even think about it, and the time like that because the more you start thinking about it, the more you're like, you it's it's almost like having the um, I want to call it the Cinderella, the, the Romeo and Rome, like Romeo and Juliet effect and stuff where it's. Uh, because because they tell you it's it's like let's just say you cut you're kind of dating a girl and your parents and your parents and their parents is like you guys can't date each other it makes you guys like each other more because they said you guys can't date yeah. well anyway no and i'm gonna marry this chick that's that's it's that stupid shit but it you know if you're saying like you can't have this drink or you can't have this thing like oh no i'm gonna have more of it now <laughs> yeah dude, and I, I it's true. crazy yeah it's super true no, I, I agree with Know Your Worth where he's saying like many times hunger is just thirst, uh, drink more water or like for me and obviously, yeah, I'm not perfect either. But like for me, a lot of a lot of that sometimes like overeating or just excess eating has been like bored. Like I used to do that when I was younger. I'd like go into the kitchen and I was just like bored and <laughs> would just like open the fridge. It's like, wait, I think I'm I should actually just be fulfilling, you know, filling my time with something productive versus just you know, oh, there's nothing to do. Let's eat a sandwich. So, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's always something that, you know, people struggle with and anyways. Right. Yeah. But there's some things you just stay away. Like, dude, like I, like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a little talking out my ass here, but like, I've, I've done okay. Okay. In my life. So I'm yeah. <laughs> so like, Hey, but I'm not, but like, you know, obviously you stay away, just stay away from things that are just like obviously retarded, like, yep. like hard drugs, anything like, yeah heron like like it's like yeah. such like no brainer shit like, mm. like if i even have it's kind of sad i even have to say that <laughs> it's like don't inject that don't inject that thing that's going to end up making you super like addicted to it like yeah no yeah bro, you I don't know believe you, bro. i don't believe you bro trust and verify first you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> no you're right about that common sense thing like common sense ain't common and, and and yeah i know specifically with stuff like that like yeah yeah don't don't open pandora's box <laughs> you know so yeah hair on or hero in yeah yeah be careful careful for all my guys in jewel and jewel and stuff don't be spending all your jewel on fucking heroes man <laughs> <laughs> oh definitely you know actually to answer one quick question that i've i I've just i remember like i've just been going through some of my comments on a lot of my videos and i keep remembering that this people keep asking this so um because I talk a lot about GameFi now, which are just basically, you know, games with like tokens and stuff like that. And you can yield farm on it. And it has a possibility of actually going a little viral because it's a game. Well, um, someone keeps asking me, is that going to happen on Pulse Chain? Yes, at some point. But from what I've seen, I don't see anything in the horizon right now. At some point, yes, there will be. That'd be really cool. And if maybe um, I am in talks with some with some projects and stuff like that, that I'm trying to push it that way right now which is cool. It's like, I'm, you know, I got connects in the phantom ecosystem and stuff. So I'm trying to maybe some projects over there, try to have, try to have them come over there to pull chain, which would be really cool. But it's just the sort of thing where it's going to take a while because you know, it's not, it hasn't even launched yet. So once things are launched and they start like, Oh, I see what it is. Boom. You know? Yeah. Did you see uh ginger's comment uh, about the open sea stuff? Like, because oh, I had heard about uh, that, but I honestly didn't really see much or, or kind of verify. But uh, I'd heard something. Yeah, about did that you too. hear about the open sea contract issue? A dude stole five hundred plus Ethereum worth of NFTs. No, I saw that whole thing. Yeah, um, oof. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. I mean, it really the many people who could have been possibly affected by that were basically people who had um, ba -ba -ba -ba, who who had things like wait, let me see. Who basically had things for sale or were or were trying to migrate their their um, their sales onto the new contract because like um, OpenSea was coming out with a contract where you be able to batch transactions, so it was basically a way for you to save on gas fees on ETH. I see what you mean. 
But if you had no sales or nothing, if, you, if your wallet hadn't touched like OpenSea or nothing, and nothing happened, but it's not a good look for OpenSea. It's it's that's pretty. I'm saying that's a little better for looks, but a lot. Of, this is Gerardo was actually saying this a little bit where like he like most people didn't understand what Mintra or Mint. Mint I keep fucking the name up, but I just call it whatever I want. Mm-hmm. Mintra, right? Mm-hmm. NFT mm-hmm. platform that he, like he's promoting and stuff with the sack phase. Um, he explained it like, hey, it's like OpenSea because everyone knows what OpenSea is. Ah, got it. But when if, if you say it was forked over from looks only, like looks from looks yeah. from the looks token, they're like, what's that? Right. So he used. Yeah. So he kind of was like, oh, I kind of fucked up, like saying like OpenSea because it's not OpenSea. It was the it's, it was from another token or different contracts. Yeah, he wasn't forking OpenSea. It was the the looks contract, which is actually I think a lot better of a project. Um, mm-hmm. I was like, honestly, OpenSea should have should have had a token out by now forever. But obviously, like a lot of people don't know this, that um, they actually ended up uh, fun- uh, crowdfunding. Uh, they ended up doing a seed rate, a, a, a round, basically. And then Dressen Horowitz bought the whole fucking thing, basically. Oh, really? Which is a- 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 A16Z Capital, basically. You know, like they're the, they're the biggest hedge fund in crypto. And they're and they're a yeah. part of a larger conglomerate, which is in Dressen Horowitz. So kind of shit that there hasn't been a token it's kind of lame but right kind of just is what it is you know yeah no it's it's true like what you mentioned just about pull chain in general uh obviously a, a blockchain versus some other things what are which are individual uh i'm excited dude what just some of the even with the test net the the block speeds themselves kind of just looking at the block explorer and just watching them them churning and burning I'm excited for the for the V3 and then obviously for the launch, but that's a really big deal, man. Whether it's people doing NFTs or anything else, uh, to be able to have cheaper transaction fees, so that'll be fun when it when it when it launches. You know, maybe four more weeks or four more years. Four more years, man. Can you imagine <laughs> we the channel until next year. Could you imagine, bro? Could you imagine, like, my God, bro? <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, it wouldn't be good. <laughs> <laughs> that's true man you might have to make a run for it at that case yeah but in terms of like with within like what what the pulse chain if i had to say what what was actually needed you do need a mintra or a minter what the fuck it's called sorry a mintra mm-hmm. mintra i'll just call it whatever i want yeah mintra, I mintra, mintra, yeah. Right? yeah well whatever they end up we you do need an interface for the nfts because you're copying over so mm-hmm. you know you got the token you got all the tokens being copied over right and the, so the, each state's copied over you got we got pulse chain we got ethereum now and then we have all the tokens be, um, that come out so now you have pulse x which facilitates all of that but there's the nft side that also gets copied over there wasn't anything for it so in terms of like where i think in turn uh, what there there you do need a place to view these nfts so I get it. You know, that in terms of like what actually needs it's a use case, you do need something. And then like it's Mintra. I'll call it whatever I want, Koji. <laughs> like, don't be telling me what to do. I'll call it whatever the fuck I want. If it's Mintra, you know what? It's chocolate chip mint now. It's mint. <laughs> no, no, but all, all jokes aside. But um it, it, yeah, you do need a place to like look at the NFTs. You need a marketplace. So I, I, at the very least, it's it's hexagon made. And let's just see what happens. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I think. That's why, if you look at the current sack numbers of like of, of Mintra, people are treating that accordingly as well. Because a lot mm-hmm. of hexagons are like super anti, you know, NFTs, which I understand. But we're trying to. We're also going to be attracting people that are not a that are not a part of the hex ecosystem or the pulse chain ecosystem. So, you know, they're a bunch of shit coiners. So if they want, if they want to look at NFTs, you know, might as well have it be like store owned or like owned by yeah. the tribe, which is cool. Yep. Yeah, it's a thousand percent true. I mean. Uh, once again, with a blockchain, especially that's got the 25% burn for each transaction fee, yeah, you want there to be usage on that network and, and you want people to be building. So uh, I think the more the merrier. And, and like you said, too, uh, I know that there was like a free Pulse.io like Faucet and some of these other things that are hexagon owned or at least just people that, you know, trying to do good for the network or, you know, for the for the majority of the people onboarding new people from other ecosystems and things. That is the most important because, yeah, if you have an echo chamber that you're just echoing to, well, you know, there's a whole freaking ocean, not just a little fish tank, you know? Right. So anyone that's in the crypto mindset courses, just be on the lookout in two days. We are going to have an event. Cinematic event. So wait before you sack. Okay. 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 <laughs> Just wait, you guys. 
stuff's coming. But anyway, but yeah, man, that's uh, that's pretty much what we have to do on that and stuff. Yeah, so obviously spread that around and stuff like that. Say it in the chats and stuff. Say it there. Hey, you guys, Fight Club, enough said. Fight Club, enough said. Fight Club, enough said. All right, cool. Just got, I'm getting asked that shit like like so much. It's like you got it. like I, I've been telling people just DM me on Twitter because of my, I can't even look at my Telegram chat. My Telegram chat's like oh, this. dude. Yeah, I'm getting so many fucking messages a day. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, <laughs> like yeah, it's it's insane. I, I'm having an easier time keeping it like categorized on Twitter than it than I am on Telegram. It's kind of insane. But um, yeah, his name was Robert Paulson uh fight club reference <laughs> no but uh no dude it's true i mean that is not one thing that i expected when i first got into this i mean similar to uh, hex luther and some of these other guys that kind of didn't really expect to get into streaming but are um i never expected dude the the dms and the messages and i right. mean anymore it's like yeah everyone wants a, a piece of your time and stuff like this and you obviously got to allocate uh, accordingly but uh, you're definitely right about those yeah, DMs or messages just flying through. And and it's like either way, you just know that you're not going to be able to, at least for me, get, get to them all. And so kind of got to understand that, too, sometimes. Yeah. And Sandy, uh, yeah, I saw it. I'm so jealous. Jesus. <laughs> so we're, we're a part of this game called Fancy Birds. Fancy Birds. And uh, they have a token and stuff. And I don't know what the hell happened to me. I must have fell asleep during it. I had a I got a white listing and I didn't get any of my 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 birds made which is really pissed me the fuck off and then here sandy's over here talking that she see she got a pepe bird and shit made me so <laughs> mad <laughs> bro i like it so much it's like it's like the bird i wanted but it's it's all yeah. good <laughs> i know what you mean yeah, oh yeah. My God, i would have the... been posting that shit like all day dude i'm like look at my bird <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But um, no, but it just is what it is with that, which is pretty cool. So no, no, but yeah, um, yeah, there's just a lot to going on and stuff like that. But um, in terms of that, are you, are you still doing stakes and stuff? I've really, I guess I've never really asked you, honestly. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so I am, I know, uh, yeah, we haven't really talked about it a whole bunch. Um, so I know with a lot of the, obviously the, I mean, cause you and I both remember that when we were doing stakes, there wasn't even the calendar and stuff like that. And you're like, you know, day, it, you know, you had to say for the amount of days, like, I don't know, a thousand days and then kind of you'd be off by one and stuff. Uh, I definitely am staking for sure. Yeah, totally. I'm still doing stakes. What I'm actually doing is just consolidating because uh, I'll be honest, some of them I'm starting to realize like at most I'll do biannually, you know, um, mm. you know a couple of stakes per yeah, year. Big, bigger ones, I had, bigger ones, yeah. yeah, dude, exactly. Because I diluted yeah, some of the and you know they're still super nice and i'm happy about it but i've learned for just optimum you know um yeah amount of shares and amount of yield to uh, to make them smaller as far as the quantity but then yeah bigger stakes and at most a couple per year so i'm kind of just taking some of the ones that were maybe you know some of the smaller stakes kind of consolidating them and then yeah just throwing them out wherever the the ladder still needs the rungs got it wait what the hell because, cause yeah, dude, I know, uh, I mean, yeah, once again, <laughs> none of us really expected the fees to go from a penny to send the transaction to, I mean, you know, the last send I did was like 15 bucks to send, you know, so right. you always kind of have to adjust accordingly. I thought at the worst case, it'd be like $100 to unstake. Worst case. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was I wrong? Was I wrong? <laughs> Fuck. I was, yeah, I, was like, I was like damn near like 10, 20x wrong. That's how bad, how much I was wrong on that. Like, and it's climbing because, like, every, the three month stakes are even like, dude, it's going to end up costing a full fucking Ethereum to unstake sometimes. Like, I can imagine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, it's so true, man. And, like, yeah, especially for, for people, whether it's like anything crypto related or, you know, just, just realize that there's certain times, at least like with Ethereum and other networks, that, that the network's more congested. And so if it's more congested, it's going to be slower and more expensive. So I know. For me specifically, there was a couple stakes that was just like, okay, do I wait for the optimum time or do I kind of just let it burn type of deal? And so, yeah, you can definitely get a lot lower fees at least if you can get it at like a good way. Um, but you're right. Uh, yeah, a lot of us didn't really pre-plan or see that kind of happening. So kind of just got to duck so, the punches. So, so, 
Yeah, this is something that I do for like a lot of hexagons. Is like, is like I have I have a lot of consultations with hex people. I've been that's actually a majority of the consultations I've been doing recently is a lot of hexagons. Um, some of you guys may know, uh, <laughs> and helping them with their whole uh, their whole staking ladder, kind of figuring out what to do with that, and kind of giving them a second opinion on that. And um, one thing that I've been telling people recently is just really like to consolidate, like consolidate mm -hmm. maybe like six months every year a little bit up and then maybe make two instead of having like seven eight ten twenty stakes unless it's an income ladder that's different but if you're but even on the income ladder it could become like oh crap this income ladder is not working because it's not it hasn't it's it needs to appreciate a little bit more or um it's cutting into the profits in too much then maybe we consolidate it down by 50 percent to make them larger or or even just take it to every two because it's um uh, maybe taking it down to maybe like you're, you're essentially taking quarterlies instead of monthlies mm -hmm. And just kind of doing that over time and then uh, putting and making sure to put like money in your pocket because i like, a lot of people have told me what they're what they've been doing and i'm like dude you you haven't taken anything at all yeah like yep. yourself like dude like i have those conversations all the time with people like all the time like like millionaires like like barely and barely like not even being able to pay for their fucking car payment and stuff like late and shit i'm like dude bro <laughs> you gotta put a look like put like it's it's okay Shh. It's okay. Give him a hug. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Shh, 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 shh. So you can sell thirty thousand dollars of it. But Miguel, like, it's supposed to be staked out five five all the time. Like, you, I can't be. Doing... <laughs> shh, shh, shh. It's okay. You don't have to eat ramen all your life. It's okay. Yeah, don't get past this. Shh. Okay, it's okay. Take a little off the top. It's okay. It's okay. You, you, mm. you, you sure, Miguel? That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, you can take a you can take a little. You can put some in your pocket. It's okay. Okay, just because you said so. Okay. All right. Good. Good. All right. Yeah, call me back and like uh, hit me up in three months and stuff, and you'll see how you're doing. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, dude, it, it's true. I mean, yeah, you know, once again, a lot of people, yeah, it's. Yeah, they're not they're not actually like gains or losses, obviously, until you realize it. And so many people are like, oh, I'm a millionaire, like you mentioned, like on, on paper and stuff. But then, you know, yeah, we see that everything's got a market cycle. And so I know I know it can definitely be hard for some people to take profit or scoop some off the top. But if you're kind of just diligent about about that, like whatever number or percentage and things like that, then like you mentioned, then it's kind of just like a good a good, I guess, like habit or thing for people to get into. Cause once again, if you are betting the whole, the whole farm, then, right. and, and like you mentioned, you're not kind of doing any of these things. Well, you know, you can never be a hundred percent certain in anything. And so, yeah. How shitty would that be if it was like, Oh, I was a millionaire and then, you know, market cycle ended or whatever happened. And, right. and yeah, you didn't realize anything that whole time. Like, like, no, don't be greedy, you know, take a little bit out and treat yourself every now and then, you know? Right. It's like well, like Art said right here. I mean, like it, you know, it's like we're in the, we're in this to change our quality of life, not struggle forever and, and be rich on paper. Yeah, mm. it doesn't mean that you should sell it all or do anything. Just take a little off the top. Like it's just like it's a it's a, okay. I get your strategy, but let's just do this a little smartly. Put a little Ethereum right here, okay? Some USDC there, and then make sure that you have like twenty thousand. Like let's pay off the credit cards, maybe. But yeah. no, like, <laughs> no let's pay off the credit cards. Let's just pay like off like after this one. Let's just pay this one off, just one. Let's dead snowball this bitch, you know. Shout out, mm. shout out, Ram <laughs> shout out, Ramsey. But um, you know, and then you know, I've helped people kind of get out of debt basically, and then figure out in a smart without what like what what people do is like they'll do it all in one shot, or try yeah. to go ham. I, that's very rare unless it's like they've just done very well. And then they they're like, okay, let's just let's just get let's just de-stress your life. What I like to do for a lot of clients is like make them get to this point where they're their living cost, like let's just say it, it costs you as like this person like three thousand five hundred four thousand dollars a um, a month to survive. Like, and then let's let's pay. Let's see what's your debts, what's your car payments, what's what's going on on the backside, and so let's figure this out. Boom, let's bring this down. And now now it only costs fifteen hundred dollars to be you, or two thousand from four thousand. And you'll mm. see this this amount of stress because you're working, and then you're keeping two thousand more dollars a month back in your portfolio and, and in your monthly income and this relaxes you a little bit and then you can do longer term and debt and shouldn't get a new car but hey whatever that's just a theory 
Because <laughs> like yeah. I've had I've had, I've had talks with people, and then like three four months later, I was like, yeah, I got myself a new whip. I'm like, well, <laughs> well, it, well, at least you're at least you know you we saved you like still fourteen hundred more dollars or whatever. That's cool. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, you're definitely right about like that that uh, debt snowball thing. I mean, yeah, uh, I think it was actually Maddie that initially talked about like. Um, have I think he had mentioned that people who are retired or people that have debt have like I think it's people that have debt have like automatically like a little bit less of an IQ just because some of that stress that you get from you know some right. of these things in the background or that burden that oh I'm paying this amount of interest rate on on a credit card or or a student loan or whatever it ends up being that that can really you know weigh you down and there's something yeah liberating obviously about you know, not being in debt and things like that and having assets that generate yield. But I think you're also right too, that some people always think that, like you say, that it needs to all be done at once, which it doesn't. You can just slowly, you know, chip at it like you would a sculpture. Right. No, no, I totally believe that. Yeah. <laughs> Zero debt, more ape. Yeah, no, definitely. No, but, but what you're saying about the IQ thing is right. Yeah. When you're in, when you're in a lot of debt, you're, you actually it's shown you know that you are you do become stupider and the same thing too is actually if you start making more money you, your your iq goes up <laughs> which is a hell of funny obviously there's a limit to the right <laughs> yeah it's, it was a little bit but yeah it's pretty cool <laughs> but um totally. yeah what's everyone by that spiritual too yeah so it's just uh yeah obviously I'm, I'm not telling people to do it when the prices are going down obviously but you know we make a strategy for when things start turning around and stuff and then you take a little bit off the top you know but yeah I'm looking at <laughs> hex monkey dude that guy is hilarious man <laughs> yeah but hey I, i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie and say that i didn't i wasn't like pushing it to the limit when i had the opportunity and stuff too so it is mm -hmm. it is a choice for everybody and you know you only making so much and there's an opportunity some people t you know i never did credit cards but I sort of did, but didn't like, okay, let's, I'll be for real here. But I, what I did is I aped more than I should have, but it was planned. And then I, you know, I, you know, I, pay, I started paying for things with, with credit card, which as a plan and stuff, and then paying the minimums on it for a while and then doing a job and then paying my credit card off. So it was almost like, okay, I know I've got this big job coming up in the next two, three months. So what I'll do is like, I'll start spending more regular, it's pretty stupid, but I, I I'm not gonna lie to you guys and say I didn't do it. And like mm -hmm. then from there with the the extra like cash flow that I had, I ended up aping more into crypto, and it, it worked out pretty. It worked out pretty good for me for me, basically. Yeah. But do I am I doing that now? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I, but I get you know you got to risk it for the biscuit, which I understand. Mm. But like man, dude, like yeah, it was like I I you know it's just it's what so and then you know the, uh, some people do college loans, PPP loans. Obviously, you know, yeah, that's, I'm not telling you to do that. That's on you guys. But just you know, be careful with that. You know, but mm -hmm. if it work, when it works out, it works out really well. But when it doesn't, um, the, you got to have some of the downsides of like, can you get yourself out of this mm -hmm. hole, basically? Yeah. Yeah. No, dude, it's uh, it's so true that you mentioned that. I mean, you know, uh, and I was going to say the same thing that you mentioned working the construction, especially, dude, construction specifically, super laborious. But I, I was doing the same thing, man, like uh, trying to work every single weekend or, you know, get as much hours of overtime as possible so I could... Uh, be frugal and, you know, once again, keep working hard, but then save every single penny. And just, I mean, Ethereum was like 90 to 150 bucks at that time, like absolute perfect of a bear market. And uh, so anyways, you're right that there are certain things that kind of have, you know, certain levels of risk, I guess, that, you know, might work better or, you know, not as good for, for some people, depending on, you know, what they want and how fast they want to get it in risk management. Yeah. Uh, buying one kidney for one. What the fuck are you guys talking about kidneys for? In the chat? <laughs> I love it, degenerates. I love it. But uh, no, definitely this comment right here. Brand's the best. I've never seen anyone say anything bad about the guy. Well, let me, I'll be the first. Okay, let me start. Yep, yep. So, Brand. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, Brand's an awesome guy. Um, yeah, definitely an OG in the space and stuff. I, I got nothing bad to say about Brand, honestly. So, yeah, thanks for showing up. Hell yeah. No, it's a, it's a cool community. I mean, you know, once again, like you mentioned, not every, it's so easy that, uh, you know, usually if you have like a stake in something, usually that's kind of all you care about and things like that. But as far as hacks and all these other cryptos go, like, yeah, it's not just one particular crypto to rule them all and things like that. So you have to be 
uh, open and, and understanding, like with Pulse Chain. Pulse Chain is absolutely a perfect example where instead of with Hex, how you had like a Bitcoin free claim, well, now Pulse right. Chain, everyone on, you know, ERC 20s and 721s is going to get it. I think that's pretty cool that you have to realize that not everyone's going to like the same thing that you do, but then also appeal to that mass market too. Cause I think Richard's going to get a decent market share of, you know, what would be Ethereum 2.0 maybe. You know, let, let's, let's talk about something pretty serious right now for a second. Right. Like this guy has like a, like an unbelievable good, like comments of brand complaint. Number one, bring back the tank tops. All right. So <laughs> let's, uh, I mean, yeah, I've got, I've got to say like, I'm a little, yeah, I'm a, I'm a tad bit disappointed brand. Like what's, what's going on with that? <laughs> with the tank tops i was i was uh tired of getting harassed by rg3 <laughs> no um Who? yeah i know it's oh by rg3 i was making a joke because he'd always have me on discourse syndicate and he's like hey brand and he'd just like cancel everyone else but it was just like me and him for a minute oh, on, right, uh, right, on right. Discord. <laughs> like, like... I'm, I'm just making yep yep exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm the captain now <laughs> Wait, i think there's a different mode i can put it in wait hold up let me there we go Okay, Brand, go ahead. Tell the class. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's here's the class we got in session. No, but uh, yeah, as far as that goes, I mean, those were honestly uh, a handful of tank tops that I had just made uh, because, mm -hmm. once again, most people don't realize that, I mean, now you can get, you know, merch on Amazon or wherever else, but right. uh, you had to, like, yeah, make it yourself because it's, like, all rights reserved and no one else was really selling any, any, uh, any merchandise. You can make one of ones, right? It was, like, one of ones, right, was allowed. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And of course, it was like an unspoken thing of just, you know, a whole bunch of people just making their own stuff. Um, right. But anyways, no, yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't purchased any any uh, anytime soon. But, you know, I'm uh, getting back into the to the gym and the sauna and stuff like that for uh, for for when tank top season, you know, spring and summer kind of is is around. So, you know, man, working, I've got a mission, working towards man. goals always. <laughs> I, I got a mission for the summer, man. Get get back the cuts for the sluts, man. I'm trying to get. <laughs> I'm trying. To, I'm trying to, I'm cutting down, man. Like, bro, I'm, yeah, I'm in the yep. gym every fucking day. Like, um, I'm gonna go tonight at like midnight if I have to, but I'll go. Yeah, uh, dude. Yeah. The, my best workouts are always at night. It's always an. It's always been that for, for me. I'm not a morning person at all. Like people who can yeah. do PRs in the morning are just sick individuals. I just need to be like <laughs> put down. Um, these people are not normal, and um need to go get psychological help but anyway no <laughs> but no you are strong like i guess so if, from what i've read in terms of like technically when you're the strongest it's a it's usually it's usually around like noon to two o'clock in that range whatever the time zone you're in it's usually around midday where you're actually actually the strongest in terms of your whole body and stuff because obviously you're you're fully awakened of your cns is at full throttle and where like if you had like a really tough day and you're working out at the nighttime you're pretty sleepy but it's kind of crazy like if you wake up early and you're interrupting your sleep you, you could not you still you're still would be you're so stronger at nighttime after taxing the whole system which is insane mm. but yeah man yeah. cuts for the sluts yeah shout out for zeke's <laughs> greatness man that's shout out chris jones baby she <laughs> but yeah but the one, one of the, I wish I could work out, like, I, I remember the reason I started working out in the afternoon was like, um, you know, obviously if, if you work out, if you're just like everybody, right, you, you're, you're working stiff or like you get off early, everyone's usually getting off around the same time. Usually they're getting off between 4 p.m. to 6. So that gym time is terrible, yeah. terrible. Yeah. You can't yeah. do nothing. Squat racks are taken. I mean, you might as well just be in the corner with the 10 pound weights. <laughs> well dude i noticed that same thing too and it, it always kind of used to not get on my nerves but like you're right that i mean specifically i mean at the at the gym that i go to it's you know it's a bigger one but um and obviously different time zones that you mentioned but you're right dude where some people and obviously i get you know different strokes for folks but usually when i'm going there it's you know pretty dedicated and kind of just focused but but yeah you see like you mentioned four to six p.m things like that uh a lot more like loitering and kind of like people hogging machines. And it's like, dude, like, you know, if you're going to be talking and socializing for five minutes between sets, like at least let me hop in between. Don't just hog. The right. Machine, so it's, there's just gym etiquette, gym etiquette, you know, like, mm. and everything mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, man, shout out to Brian, man. This guy jacked, like, like jacked. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I know for a but like, this is the biggest flex right here. I'm in crypto and I no longer have to wake up early. That's awesome. It's yeah, it's man, so true. Yeah. I mean, yeah. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. 
Uh, just everyone, I mean, shit, like no one wants to be working for someone else for the rest of their life or for 40 hours a week or for certain things like this. So yeah, that is the ultimate flex is to be able to have your time back and, and, and whatever you do with that time, whether you're, you know, with your family or, or relationships or yeah, health and fitness and stuff, it's just cool to be able to have that uh, opportunity that obviously, you know, most people don't have and stuff. So you kind of have to realize that, yeah, that's, that's obviously something to be grateful for. So yeah. Shout out to that guy. That's that's an amazing feat and accomplishment. So I usually find like the entrepreneur, at least one that like, I, I'm just like giving out game right here because we're talking about fitness a little bit because it's really important, right? Um, mm -hmm. bah, 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 bah. Like I usually find out like 10 to like noon or one o'clock is like a gangster hour basically where like it's either people who aren't working anymore or like the gym's really like interesting at that point. Like I meet a, I'm a ton of entrepreneurs. Like you just basically know who's, who's doing pretty well when you see them at the gym, <laughs> you know? Yeah, dude, that time. I totally know what you mean. It's yeah. true, man. Yeah. You can, uh, yeah. It, it's always kind of nice, you know, getting on the, the same, you know, flow and whatnot with other people that are kind of there to kick ass too. I mean, kind of just dedicated. So kind of boosts up the uh the energy in the room to get those prs and stuff no definitely definitely i thought honestly when i was a kid man or when i was like you know when i was like 20 or something like that 19 years old i thought if i didn't have to work i would be the most jacked motherfucker on the planet like there's like bro if, if like you mean like my job is like i wake up and i just go to the gym like i like i don't know why like i like I, it is true though but it's just like you have to make it a priority but it's like man it's pretty tough like sometimes like the one thing i will say that's kind of fucked up with me is like my sleep schedule is terrible like today i actually woke up early than normal i woke up yep, at 1 yep. 30 in the afternoon yeah yeah dude <laughs> i hey <laughs> i know what you mean dude you're yeah everyone's got different schedules and timings and stuff like that you know yeah it's uh yeah, I woke up pretty uh, like normally I've been waking up three in the morning and three in the afternoon, which is like horrible, bro. It's terrible. It's fucking on my schedule, so I need to fix that up. I know what you mean. But um, I just been grinding a lot in the night because I find that's when I like things slow down a little bit, and then I can like really digest a lot of information in terms of like things slow down, so then I could really focus on stuff. The news sort yeah. of slows down a little bit, which is which is what I like to do. Yeah. But yeah. No, that's that's true, man. Yeah, I'm definitely. Uh you know, stay up late, <laughs> late as well. And usually find kind of like you mentioned, and it's good to experiment with that stuff, right? Where, yeah, whether it's <laughs> like you mentioned, like, uh, like if you're an absolute animal, you know, lifting super early in the morning, like, cause I've done it five in the morning and stuff. And I've also done it yeah, at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, but kind of like you mentioned with different timings and things, you can always experiment with what works, what doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the chat's just going wild over like, like this is why this is why you're always streaming at like 3 a.m. Eastern Standard. <laughs> it's like we have at midnight or something. What's well, is a lot of times I don't have time in the day until like I'm either doing consults and then I'm doing a lot of some research or I'm like I'm moving some money around or guild farming a little bit here and there that like I don't have time until like maybe like 10 at night or nine o'clock at night and then I do the live stream then and stuff. But yeah, I'm sorry for these coasters, man. It just sucks, man. But um, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, at least you're making time to do that kind of stuff. You know, once again, a lot of people would just, you know, make an excuse and, and not do it in the first place. So, no, definitely, yeah, I, yeah. But um, yeah, I'll fix up the sleep schedule and stuff. I'm, I'm just like, I, I got some personal stuff going on, not relationship or nothing like that. Just some other personal stuff in terms of family and everything going on, and it's been mean. like, it's been stressing me out a little bit too in the background. But hopefully, yeah. that shit gets all squared away, and I can just get back to my rhythm and stuff. And uh, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, there's always something, dude. There's always something like, you know, and a lot of stuff. Yeah, stuff that we can't control or stuff that kind of happens every now and then. But there's always going to be like, you know, like a, you know, a rock thrown in your direction or something like that thrown in your uh, direction, whether it's like, yeah, your success is like wealth or health or something like that. Usually, usually there's something. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a constant, uh, not struggle, but like constant something to, to, you know, break through next and kind of have as a next feat. So I know what you mean, whether it's, sleep or, or finances or you know stuff like that yeah so. definitely cool man well uh is there anything else you want to talk about man no dude that was pretty much it i mean i do appreciate you having me on your channel and and once again yeah i watch uh you know watch you know almost all of your videos and stuff and you and charlie i know uh kind of do you know some of the streams i've seen at least like some some early in the morning and stuff but anyways no i appreciate uh 
you know, the, like I said, the people that I've met and hung out with uh, through your course, uh, which was really cool. And that's pretty much it. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we're once again, whether this person's that tribe or that tribe and stuff, like a lot of us just want the same freaking thing at the end of the day and, you know, might be different means to, to get those things a little bit more quickly. So shout out to your chat. Appreciate everyone being, uh, you know, kind and, and genuine. And that's pretty much it, dude. Yeah. So I've got three more things to say just before we go out, get off the, the stream and stuff. Obviously, um, anyone that's in any of the crypto mindset chats and stuff, be on the lookout for a pin message that's going to happen either within tomorrow or the next day. So fight club rules. And um, from there, um, obviously, in terms of the hex price, I do believe we're going to get a little bit more of a dip on hex. But right now is actually good kind of a little step to get a little DCA in right now on hex. It's at 15 cents. Pretty good price. If it goes lower and more beautiful, just remember to stair step down. And if it really turbo dumps, that's where you that's where you ape hard. Um, and the the last thing is basically for yeah anyone who wants a consultation or anything like that, just DM me directly on Twitter. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually um, DMing people back right now. I'm scheduling out for the next two three weeks right now because um, I won't know what my schedule will be in April. But I'm kind of mapping out everyone right now for uh, the rest of this month as well as uh, early parts of March. So. Yeah, don't forget to sub, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. If you don't hit the notification bell, then you will be um, you you get un you unsubscribe for some reason because of YouTube. So it makes a right. big difference. It makes a big difference. So check you guys out, uh, Moon Gang, in about an hour. Or so see you guys soon. Peace. Peace.